everybody, Ben Lawless here. Uh, today I want to talk to you about norm referencing and criterion referencing and why I think that criterion referencing is much better for student outcomes. So norm referencing is where we compare student achievement to norms, to what they should be achieving uh, at a certain age. So for example, you'll see in the Australian and most state curriculums, it'll say at the end of year seven, the student should be able to do this. At the end of year eight, a student should be able to do this. At the end of year nine, a student should be able to do this. Now, these all come basically based on your age. There's no nothing that I've ever seen that says where they get this information from. Um, my hunch is that it's basically just a guess from the curriculum writers as to what they think the average is. Um, now, there's a lot of criticism about our education system saying that it's mired in the industrial model and that it was developed in the 1850s or so to produce workers for... Uh, industrial manufacturing and one of the big criticisms that's related to norm referencing is it's the idea of your date of manufacture yeah everyone who was born 12 years ago is in year seven and therefore should have this exact same level of student ability now as any of you have taught for more than five seconds knows this is probably only true for about that middle 25 30 percent now, and it's really demotivational for students at the top and at the bottom. So the students down here who are below the aged level, age norm, um, you know, they might be working really, really hard, putting in all kinds of effort. And yet, according to the age norm, they're not achieving it. And so they'll get negative marks and be demotivated because they're not seeing any um, benefit for their effort. Equally for the students at the top, which in Australia are the students who make the least amount of growth, for these students, they're way above the age-based norms, and so they find it quite easy to get A's, A pluses, and so they kind of take their foot off the gas and don't make that much progress. Norm referencing really focuses on uh, current achievement rather than progress, which is another big weakness of the Australian assessment system, ecosystem overall. Um, we focus on current achievement rather than progress, and so we look at schools that have got high achievement, so high VCE, high inter scores, and think that they're doing well, when in fact most of those really, really high achieving students would have done pretty much as well no matter which school they went to. And so we are focusing and we're looking at what those schools do when actually we should be looking at the schools that produce the most amount of progress. So norm referencing is comparing students to an age-based norm, okay? It's demotivational to students at the top and the bottom. It's developmentally inappropriate for most students, except maybe those middle 25, 30% who have an average level of achievement, have an average level of progress every year. It doesn't describe any of their behaviors. Uh, and basically it's not backed up by research. Um, the criterion referencing system is comparing students to criteria, comparing students comparing student achievement to statements saying what they can do. So, for example, a well-written rubric um, will have a list of statements saying what students can do, and if your student can do that, then they have achieved that, the end. Now, the benefit of that is that there's no judgment placed on it, yeah? With a norm referencing system, if you are below the norm, then you're negatively judged. And this is so many students have had negative experiences of assessment at school because they get negatively judged based on these inappropriate norms. You know, the norm that they're all compared to is the norm for all students in the country. It's not relevant to any one student. So to compare them to it, it's unfair and judgmental. For criteria referencing, you know, there'll be uh, a well-written set of criteria like a rubric or a uh, developmental progression just have a list of different criteria that get more and more difficult and if you can display that skill then you get assessed at that level what do you need to do to get better whatever the next thing up is so the benefits of criterion referencing is that it's non-judgmental it tells students what they can do and it tells students um, what they need to do to get better so um because most of our curriculum is based on that, most of the published texts out there don't have any real understanding about criterion referencing and, and don't have that kind of mindset behind what they do. In the Matilda books that are coming out, the Good Humanities, we have a learning ladder, which is a broad spread of difficulty. So when you have a look at the learning ladder, um, you'll see that there's a list of criteria from, uh, from here up to here. I think there's five for each skill. Now, the, the least 
difficult of that is probably below the age level norm and the highest is above the age level norm, um, five levels. Now, in most uh, published curriculum, they only have one statement for the whole year level. In Matilda and Good Humanities, there are five which spread below the age-based norm to above it. Um, what you'll find is that in any typical classroom, there's at least five, four or five year levels of difference of ability anyway. Um, so having a learning ladder that reflects this um, is much better in my opinion. So in our Good Humanities 7, the simplest skill that you can do is probably at a grade 5 or grade 6 level, and then moving up to what's probably like a year 8 or year 9 level. Yeah, So that um, it includes descriptions of performance that encompasses a more typical year 7 classroom than just the one statement that you see in the curriculum, or in most other published texts that don't say anything about it at all. Um, so we uh, also, the extension, what we would typically be called the extension material. We don't have any labels like this. We just have um, the various levels as the students go through the activities. They do more and more difficult stuff. Um, in Good Humanities, that that more difficult material is incorporated into the book itself. It's not hidden away in some digital um, place. Um, huge amount of benefits in using criterion referencing from norm referencing. As mentioned, doesn't pass judgment on students. Um, probably the most influential piece of research done about feedback is Hattie and Timperley's work, their 2007 journal article. It suggests that feedback should give you information on three things. Where am I going? How am I going? And where to next? Okay, so where am I going? What are the goals with our learning ladder? Where are you going is you want to get to the top of that ladder. How are you going? You know that you can do the activities at this level and this level. And where to next? Whatever the next difficulty skill up is, that's where you need to go to next. So criterion referencing tells you where you're going, how you're going, where to next, whereas norm referencing just judges students somewhat inappropriately against age-based norms that aren't relevant to them. And Matilda does a pretty good job of coming down on the right side of that debate, criterion referencing rather than norm referencing. Keep it real. Thank you.